You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're going to take a look at the Fujifilm FinePix X10 digital camera. It's this camera right here and it retails for $600. And this camera, actually, I'm giving the award of Mark's Pick for compact digital camera. Now the reason that I love this camera so much, there's a bunch of reasons. One, it's extremely easy to use. The second, it's got high quality images. It shoots full HD video. And I just love the way that it responds to uh, the controls on the camera itself. It's just really easy to get the uh, photos that you want really quickly. So let me walk through this. Now this lens cap is actually a metal lens cap and it sticks right on the, the lens there. And it's a little bit different than a normal lens cap because it doesn't click on, it just fits over the whole lens because the lens is actually the on off switch for the camera. So on the very top here, there's a little thing that says off. And when you twist this, it not only zooms the lens in and out, but it actually turns the camera on and off. So when you're done, twist that, the camera's turned off, stick on the lens cap, throw it in your bag, you're good to go. Now this lens, let's start there and then we'll go through the different controls, all the manual controls on this camera. This is a, uh, an f2 to 2.84x optical lens. And this actually allows you to do macro shots that are so close, you can get up to a centimeter away from your images and so we were shooting some macro shots where we were actually touching this to the edge of the stuff we were touching. I mean, it's just really super, super close. And it's a 28 millimeter lens all the way up to 112 millimeters. So you can do all kinds of th things with this camera. You can shoot uh, wide angle shots for scenic photography and macro shots and all kinds of different things. But then you can zoom in and get great shots for portrait photography and wildlife photography and uh, everything in between. So I love the lens. I love the clarity of the lens. And it just had some really uh, high quality, sharp images, which is really nice. Now, once the light goes through there, you get your scene. It hits the sensor. This has a 12 megapixel CMOS sensor and we had great results with that sensor. Well, um, that's all good, and, but the thing that I really love uh, more about this is how to operate this camera because it allows you to have a small point-and-shoot camera that behaves like a full professional DSLR camera because of the way that you can control this. So let me just sort of go through really quickly here. We've got some things uh, on the top here. You've got your shutter release button. You've got this mode dial. And I'm going to show you some of these modes a little bit later on. Uh, but then there's this big exposure compensation dial right here that allows you to uh, dial things in either uh, over or under um, the set exposure so you can compensate for things like snow or dark environments really easily. And it doesn't slip. This is a, uh, a pretty stiff dial, so you can't accidentally over or underexpose. You have to really intentionally set that. But because it's right here by your thumb, you can meter and then dial that in up or down really, really quickly. And that's sort of how this is set up. There's another dial right back here that allows you to set all kinds of different things like shutter speeds and aperture values. And it's a multi-function dial, so you can push this as well as roll this. And so it does two different things. And depending on the mode you're in, it does all kinds of different things. And then down here, right again by your thumb, there's uh, even more controls where you can set white balance and macro modes and flash modes and uh, the shooting modes, things like that. Right there, there's a little function button on the top here that you can program to do different things like uh, jumping right into the ISO settings or maybe the white balance settings, things like that. Um, you've got your standard controls over here to zoom in and zoom out, set white balance, playback images. There's a pop-up flash on there, so if you need a flash, there's also a hot shoe, so you can add an external flash if you want. Uh, this has a, a huge screen on the back that you can see what you're shooting, or if you prefer, you can look through a viewfinder, and that viewfinder will zoom in and out with the lens, and it does that optically, so it's not a digital viewfinder, it's actually an optical viewfinder. Now, one thing that is a negative with this camera, this uh, optical viewfinder here doesn't really match what you're going to get. And so I did a bunch of tests to see if, uh, for example, a, a line would line up with what I'm seeing in the viewfinder, and it doesn't. And so this is just for reference to say I'm pointing that direction. But what I found myself doing is ignoring this optical viewfinder because it was so inaccurate, it didn't really help me get my composure set. So uh, that is one thing I wish that was improved with this camera because it's, it's not worthless, but almost worthless because it doesn't really show you what you're shooting at all. Um, so you really have to use the LCD viewfinder. Now on the front, there is a control for manual focus, continuous focus, and single shot focus. And really quickly, you can dial that in just by clicking a switch. 
So for people that are used to having a lot of manual controls where you can quickly change what you're doing, this camera has all of that. And that's one of the things I really love about this camera. This camera has an image sensitivity from ISO 100 all the way up to a crazy 12,800. So you can shoot in low light, bright light, and again, you can do almost anything with this. And because it's made by Fujifilm, you have these awesome film modes. And so you can get Velvia and Provia and Astia and all the, the Fuji films that you're used to with the olden film days, uh, they're emulated here in this camera. And it does all kinds of things. But really to dive in, let me go through and sort of show you what some of these modes do on this uh, mode dial here. Now I'm gonna skip over some of these. So for example, it's got manual mode for shooting in full manual mode. There's aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode. Some of the modes that are very familiar to many photographers that are standard on almost every camera. But this also has some additional modes like EXR and full auto and an advanced mode and an SP mode. And so to understand all of these things, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw this on a tripod and we're going to walk through those really quickly. Now the tripod, I just want to mention, this is a Manfrotto tripod here. Now this guy right here is a tripod that um, actually pairs really well with this and I use this. This is the uh, Manfrotto 293 aluminum tripod. And so when I was shooting in, out and about, uh, this mounted right on there. So if you're looking for a tripod to go along with your camera, uh, that's one you might consider. So let's dive in really fast. I'm going to show you these modes uh, so you can understand even a little bit more why I love the way this camera behaves. And to understand all of these modes better, well first we're going to go through the full auto mode. Now what the full auto mode does is it uh, automatically selects the camera settings, specifically the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture value that you'd need. But you still need to go in there and set things like if the flash is going to come on and if you're in macro mode or different things like that. And so it works pretty well. There's a different scene setting and it's called the SP mode or scene position mode. And this will help us understand some other things. And what scene position mode does is it allows us to choose different scenes. So we'll click menu and then in scene position, you just go to the right on the multi selector. And then there are a bunch of different scene types. So there's night and night with a tripod, shooting fireworks or sunsets or snow or beach, underwater party. Uh, maybe you're shooting a flower or shooting text. Maybe you're shooting something that uh, you want to emulate natural light with a flash or you're actually shooting natural light. Maybe you're shooting portraits or you want to enhance a portrait to uh, improve the skin, make it look a little bit smoother, shooting landscapes or sports and then back around tonight. So there's all these different scene positions that allow you to really quickly dive in and shoot exactly what you want. But sometimes you don't want to manually go in there and select those because you're shooting pretty fast or maybe you just don't want to worry about it. And that's where the EXR mode comes in. So I'm going to go over there to EXR. And what EXR Auto does is it sort of combines the auto mode with the scene position mode. So it's going to automatically select the camera settings and the scene position. So for example, I've got this little hokey flower here and I put it in there and then the camera is going to automatically detect that that is a macro shot. And you can see that shows up right there. Or if somebody hops in, here's Michael, he's going to pop in the scene. This detects that it's a portrait, and if he starts moving his hands really in a wacky way, it says portrait in motion, so it knows. All right, thanks, Michael. Hop on out. And so that is what EXR mode does, and it goes through any of those uh, scene positions that we showed you earlier, so it's really nice. Then there's something called the advanced scene mode. And what the advanced scene mode does is it gives you some options here. So again, I'll click the menu setting, and there's the advanced mode. I can go in there. And there is a panorama mode where I can, uh, you can pan the camera and it will create a panorama for you. You can go down here, you can do pro focus. Now what this allows you to do is really have the background out of focus. They're calling it pro focus and it uh, means really shallow depth of field. But it does that uh, using some uh, special features of the camera where it takes a couple pictures and combines them and it really makes an amazing shot. Then there's something here called pro low light. And that really makes sure that things in low light uh, are really clear and still. And so it's good for shooting, obviously, in low light. And then there is the full HD movie mode. And so you can shoot a movie with uh, full sound. So I can go in here, I can change the movie mode from uh, 1920 at 30 frames per second to 1280. And there's just a normal um, standard definition file. There's all these different movie modes here. And so you can shoot in full HD. 1080p, 720p, and on down the line to standard definition. So those modes are awesome. And then there are also two modes here, C1 and C2. 
and these are where you can customize these and you can uh, set it to act the way you want it to. So maybe it's program mode with uh, autofocus set to single mode in a certain ISO or however you want to do that. So you can set up the metering modes and some different things like that. So you can quickly go to the mode that you've set up with just a turn of the dial. Now there are a couple other things in the back here I really like and so I'm going to go back here to just uh, a normal mode. So I'm in uh, aperture priority mode and to show you how great these controls work if I want to change my aperture value, I can use this dial right here, left or right, or I can spin this left or right, so you have a choice there. If I want to change some different settings, I can go into the menu, I can change the ISO, the image quality, I can change the film simulation, I talked about that earlier, earlier from Provia to Velvia to Astia, black and white, with black and white with different filters, so there's all kinds of things built in there for you to do. There's a pop-up flash and you can control that by going right. If you want to uh, immediately go over to shoot raw files, you can just click this raw button and you'll see this raw that pops up. And so you can shoot just raw uh, when you want or you can set it to shoot raw all the time. There's an auto exposure and auto focus lock that are built in. There's a custom white balance setting. You can see that this is a camera that has a lot of features built in. All right, so you can see that these modes are awesome. And so just to recap, let me tell you why it's one of Mark's picks for uh, the, one of the best cameras I've seen in the past year. So one of the only negatives I saw with this camera was the optical viewfinder. I found it to be totally inaccurate and so I didn't use it very much. But other than that, I loved all of the analog controls that are out here where I didn't have to dive through menus to get to them. I loved the film emulation settings. I loved all the different modes that allow me to get right to the way I want to shoot very, very quickly. I love that I can customize this camera with the custom mode settings as well as the function buttons. I love the build. I love that it's metal and it's very durable. I love this uh, lens that lets me turn things on and off just by twisting it. I love that it's really small and I love the retro look. So all in all, the Fuji FinePix X10 digital camera, one of my favorites that I've seen over the past year and it's only $600 so I highly recommend it. It's a terrific camera. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode and related videos. For all the latest photography, video and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.